All right, so today's discussion, um, this, this discussion is very near and dear to my heart. Um, this is this, a discussion that I can have all day, every day, any day, um, because it is a passion that I have. It's a passion that I have, not just as it relates to business development, but also as it relates to business development in the realtor space. Um, we are, let me move this over. So we can get into this. Right. So Title Tuesdays. Welcome back to Title Tuesdays. Again, the Title Tuesday, uh, Title Tuesdays, the mission of Title Tuesdays is to provide a weekly coaching call for my real estate colleagues. It's to discuss the latest trends. It is to provide you with all the need to know information to grow your business, all right? So we come in and we we all see this the, the, the familiar names. We see new names and Sometimes some faces, if you come on camera or put your photo up. And so there's a networking piece, but at the end of the day, um, it's the, the purpose is to grow your business, right? This is for us to get to the finish line and put some numbers on the board, right? So Title Tuesdays and for closing sake was born out of all the questions that I get. Um, as a real estate and closing attorney at the closing table and also as an instructor. Many of you guys have probably met me at the board teaching some of the classes. And so this is the, the, the classes and the sessions that we have each week. They're a collaboration of all the questions that I get. They're also the questions that I don't get, right? So it's like, I, I know what you're asking, but there's something else that you haven't asked that relates to your question. And so it's a collaboration of all those things. And so with that being said, I do encourage you guys to continue to ask questions, send me your questions and suggestions for topics. And we will definitely have those discussions each Tuesday as we come here. And so one of the um, comments that I make each week when we come together and it's to give you some um, notice and motivation as it relates to learning. And that is, when you encounter an issue that impedes your forest progress, you've not reached a dead end. You simply reached the extent of your knowledge, right? So when you come to a point and you're like, oh, this is it, release a cancellation time. Maybe not, maybe not. And oftentimes it isn't. And, and what do we always say? There's always a resolution to issues. It may just take a little bit more time or it may take some more money, but there's always a solution. And so what the end of the day is, there's simply a solution that you haven't learned about. So when we come together, guys, the whole idea, the concept of coming together is to allow you to learn more, to earn more. There's a few people that go to school just for the sake of learning. They love knowledge, right? But most people, they go to school for the purposes of increasing their value, increasing their impact, increasing their income. And so when you come together, it is our goal that you will learn more so that you will turn around and earn more immediately when you leave our calls together. For those who I haven't had an opportunity to meet before, welcome to the Title Expert Space. We are a full service title insurance and settlement firm. We service all of Florida. If we had not had an opportunity to meet you before or work with you before, we welcome the opportunity to work with you. Some of the features and benefits of working with title experts include that it is an attorney managed firm. That would be me <laughs> and my partner. With that being said, you guys probably know that when you run into legal issues, I hope you know, um, if you're with a title company, which does not have a, an attorney in place, um, if an illegal issue arises, they cannot provide you with legal advice. They'll have to tell you, go find an attorney, We'll put your file to the side and wait for you to get back with the answer, right? So here in our office, we don't have that issue. We're able to bump you over if necessary. If it gets nasty enough, <laughs> we can bump you over to one of the attorneys on the law firm side to resolve your legal issue. But also in the meantime, if it's simple enough, right? We'll just tell you what the legal resolve is. So here's what the contract says. Here's what that means. And I'm sure you guys have heard numerous times in your own training and education, um, only attorneys can provide legal advice. You guys are not out there trying to provide legal advice. And so those are one of the features and benefits of working with title experts. Additionally, we do provide a dedicated closing team. One of the main complaints that we often hear is, I don't know who to talk to. I'm not sure who's there, who's on my, who's working on my file. You know, I get a different person every time I, I ask a question. And so we definitely have the model of a dedicated closing team. So you always know who to ask for, who you're talking to, and you're always getting the same advice and instructions. 
Finally, one of the other important complaints that we get <laughs> and we hear about uh, title firms and not, not ours for sure, is status updates. We're constantly providing you with updates. Listen, that helps you guys um, and it helps us even more so, right? So it'll never be said, oh, I didn't know. So we're always providing those status updates. If you guys follow me on social media, you guys probably see that we do what's called a daily huddle. Now, if I were you, that's something that I suggest that you incorporate even in your own business, a daily huddle, a daily check-in to just hit the high level items to make sure that everything is moving as you expected it to. And then finally, helpful closing guides. Um, one thing I've always said is most people really don't know what title insurance and settlement is, right? It's kind of like car insurance, health insurance is like something I have to do. And so we like to provide information about what it is, why you're why we're part of the process and what you can do to help facilitate that process so we like to provide that type of um closing guides and information to your clients and then finally rush processing <laughs> rush processing is available so it's one of our longtime realtor partners rush processing is always available um in circumstances where we can provide that title will be clear if we have estoppels that have to come in or if title issues arise, those are the, those are something that has to be addressed separately. But one thing you will know, that title will always be ready to close. So really quickly, when you do call in, this is just a, um, a couple of our frontline uh, title, in, title and closing team. If you do go on the contract while we're on this call, feel free to send your contract to contracts at titleexperts.com. If you have any general questions, feel free to send those questions to closings at titleexperts.com. And then finally, we're so proud of our cute little 800 number, 8665 experts from anywhere in the US. <laughs> now, that's Title Experts myself. If I haven't had an opportunity to meet you, my name is Ray Cole Jackson. I am the founder of Realty Law Group, our full service, full service real estate law firm, and Title Experts, our full service title insurance and settlement firm. Now, a little bit about my background. I do have a Bachelor of Arts from the University of Florida. All together, go Gators. <laughs> I have my Juris Doctorate from um, Santa Clara University in California. Did come back home here to uh, Miami, Florida and obtained my LLM in real property development from the University of Miami School of Law. And so we will say go Canes, right? And then finally, I am a licensed real estate sales professional. And so I often include this information when I teach either here or at the board or different places, because I know that oftentimes the attorneys get the side eye, right? Like, oh, what do they know? All they know is to say no. All they know is to find every legal issue why we cannot close. But I share that information to say that is not the case here. Listen, I have been there and done that and doing what you guys are doing. Um, and finally, one thing I always say, even as a title agent, we don't get paid until what? You get paid. So we're always working to get you to the closing table. Now, outside of that, I also share that information to provide relationship to what you guys do as real estate professionals 100% of the time. Again, I am a licensed realtor. I do dip, you know, step in that space as necessary to have these conversations. And the point is, there's no questions that you can ask. There's no experiences that you've had or will have. There's no thoughts, frustrations that you have had or will have that I have not experienced. Most of you guys know, I probably you probably know I started off in commercial real estate uh, with Cushman and Wakefield while I was in law school. Moved over to Marcus and Millichap after I graduated. And then back here in Florida, I transitioned back into residential real estate. And so whether it's residential or commercial, we can have that conversation. Now, with that being said, the six-figure agent CEO business plan was birthed out of the realization and understanding that there's not a conversation being had about how to run your real estate business like a business. That's the thought process where we need to start. We need you to run your business like a business. That will prevent the ebbs and flows That'll prevent the frustration. That'll also prevent the chaos that we sometimes feel day to day as we run our businesses, right? And so here's one of the, you know, this is always my, my welcome to you guys when, you, when we have this conversation. Congratulations. 
congratulations. Once you get your license, once you get your, your access to the MLS, once you sign up with a broker to hang your license, congratulations. You are officially the CEO of your very own real estate company. It's yours. It is all yours. So see, when you hang your license with a broker, you have to understand that your broker, they're, they're essentially your business partner, right? But at the end of the day, you're not an employee. You're not an employee. If you don't get up and make your calls, if you don't get up and do your prospecting, if you don't go show, show clients, if you don't do all those things, guess what? They'll check in with you and say, hey, you know, I see you're not putting any numbers on the board, but at the end of the day, um, you're not going to be fired. Not right away, at least. Eventually they may, because again, that's an expense to them. But I need you to understand that you are at the helm of your very own real estate business. And so realtors need a business plan and systems just like any other traditional business in order to successfully service clients and create predictable income. That's what we want, right? We don't want all the ebbs and flows. We don't want the someday, some months we're, we're flush with cash and some in a couple of months we're not. We don't want the some weeks we're showing properties and some weeks we're not. When you put a plan in place and you put the systems behind the plan, you should have a predictable income, a predictable outcome. Now I'm gonna put up, I'm gonna bust someone's bubble right here and say, guess what? Business plan includes business hours and a business schedule. Right. So what do you mean by that, Rico? That means oftentimes the very reason that that people get into real estate is the very reason that causes them to fall out of real estate. And that is you get to be your own boss. You get to set your own schedule. You do. Are you going to set it and are you going to stick to it? So this might be a tough conversation today, but listen, I, we got to have this conversation because here's the deal. If you, okay, I'll tell you this. Here's my story. Very successful attorney. This is after real estate kind of did its thing, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so I started in real estate, real estate kind of fizzled out. This was during the recession, right? And so I was in real estate. And so I, I, was, I was working with um, an attorney. <clears throat> And he said, well, you know what? You can always fall back on your bar card. How, how odd is that, right? To that most of you like fall back on your bar card? Like, like your bar card was plan B? Yeah, it actually was because I've always been in real estate. I've always had an interest in real estate sales. And so my, my mentor says, well, you can always fall back on your bar card. And so went into um, real estate litigation. And so this is something that you should know. Uh, in real estate, when litigation is up, transactions are down. When transactions are up, litigation is down. And so I fell back onto my, in my, on my bar card. And so I went into practice for about six years and I was literally at the top of my game. I, I did just fine. I mean, I was what you would call an entrepreneur, all right? So I was a higher level attorney in a law firm. And, um, but I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit, uh, a spirit and I've always, always been a leader. And so at one point I said, you know what? Time for me to go back out and do my own thing. I left a solid six figure job position to go out and start my own law firm. So here's what I will tell you. I was a stellar attorney, 100%. But here's the thing that you they don't tell you, even in law school. See, this is the things that schools don't teach you. They don't teach you how to run that business though. They teach you how to be an attorney. They teach you how to be a doctor. They teach you how to be a dentist. They teach you all these different things, but they don't teach you how to run the business that, delivers the service that you got your license or your degree in, right? So I found that out very quickly. Now, luckily, I've, I've never not made six figures, right? Never, right? Now, I got to tell you, looking back, that was probably dumb luck. <laughs> I was able to ride on my skill. But for you guys, know that real estate school, it taught you how to pass the real estate exam, but not how to run the business. True or true? If it's true, let me see some true in the chat. True or true? 
whole set, whole part of there, how many hours is like 80 hours or 40 hours? Part of your hours, at what point did they say, okay, well, once you pass your exam, here's how to, here's how you're gonna make money. If, if, if I mean, if, if there was one that did it, somebody say never, ever, ever. They never did. They taught you how to, you know, the rules and the laws, but they never told you, hey, here's how you make the money. And so this is the conversation that we must have. And this is where I, I'll have this conversation all day. So here's my decree to you, that you are more than a real estate agent. You are a real estate agent CEO because you run your own business. If you accept that mantle, and if you accept that mindset, I promise you, I promise you that you'll change the way you operate your business. Now, I wanna tell you that all of this content is borrowed from my coaching program, the Agent CEO Accelerator. You guys are probably like, what, what was that? Don't worry about it. You guys will get an invitation to uh, some of the sessions that we're gonna have starting in September, but this content is pulled from that. This content is birthed from having this conversation over the years with realtors who are struggling to find their footing in business. They know the contract, they know, you know how to show, they know all those different things, but I cannot consistently hit my income goals. I'm frustrated, this is chaotic, I don't understand. So here's what I want you to know. Most small businesses will fail within five years. That's just, that's a fact. That is a fact. Unfortunately, most real estate agents are out of the business within two. That doesn't even mean you're going to make it to the two. That means that by that point, most are out of the business within two years. Because again, we need money, right? We, 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 and no one's telling me how to do this. No one's, no one's sat down and told me how to do this. And, and, and I'll be perfectly honest with you. When you're first in this thing, I need you to break this down to me. What do they say? Like a two-year-old. <laughs> I need you to make this clear to me how I can be successful in my real estate business. There you go. Sonia said I was about to walk away year two. You really need someone to show you how to do these things. And the thing about it is, guys, although it's possible, if it were easy, everyone would be doing it. And Sonya's a top producer. If it were easy, if being a top producer were easy, everyone would be doing it. But can I tell you that it is, it is absolutely possible. It is absolutely possible. So here are the causes of failure in the real estate business. Number one, lack of vision. Lack of vision, lack of vision. Like what, what is, what is it? What, what am I, what am I going after? What am I trying to accomplish? What is my vision for myself and my business? What do they say? If you don't have a, a destination or if you don't have directions, any path will get you there. If, you, if, if, if we don't have a, if we don't have a destination, any path you take will get you there. So what's the destination? Then what is the business plan? Lack of business plan, lack of a plan. Again, what are the directions? Once we have a destination, what are the, the, what are the directions? You're never gonna get there without the directions. That's your, the directions are your business plan. The directions are for those days when you're like, wait a minute, this is not adding up. Like, where are my closings? But we, if we look back at the plan, if we look back at the directions, we see that you took a left when you should have made a right. We see that you stop prospecting on week two when you should have continued. So it's what keeps you focused. Thirdly, lack of commitment to technical development. At the end of the day, we're still providing the service. So that's where we get into the contract classes. That's where we get into the, the writer classes. That's when we get into all those different, different, how do we technically, how do we be a, a, a real estate agent, right? And then fourthly, lack of commitment to professional development. What is professional development? Professional development is what are those habits um, as a book that I'm, that I'm listening to, habits of high, high achievers. What are the habits, the consistency, the discipline, 
the mindset work, the exercise, the schedule, right? These four things are the causes of failure in our business. So we're going to start. I want to hit number one really quickly. And again, if you guys, yes, I say this again, if you've ever been in, in one of my sessions before, it's, it's so important that we start here because this is the foundation that we build on. Because if I say, um, if I start getting into the financials, if I start getting into marketing, but you have no foundation of a vision, you have no foundation of a belief on how this gets done, then it's all just going to fail. So we need to set a solid foundation of the vision. So as I was preparing, I said, you know what? What would be the, what is an example of what's possible when you put a business plan in place? So I thought about a couple couple of professionals. I mean, you guys know some locally. So obviously we're gonna think about brokers, right? And brokerages. So we thought, we thought about the Gary Kellers. We thought about uh, Robert Refkin, Compass. I'm gonna rest here for a while because I really want you guys to absorb the results of a vision, a business plan, dedication to education and dedication to professional development. You guys know Robert Refkin, and this is a photo. This is something that he posted on Instagram mm, maybe two months ago. So he said, I was recently reminded of this moment back in August of 2013. That's eight years ago when we were Urban Compass. So the name used to be Urban Compass. So that's a whole discussion in and of itself. We're trying to sell in on a name and what's our logo. People go through so many different changes. Just set it and go, go, go. You, 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 can, you can iterate and change it later. But the name used to be Urban Compass. He said, and I ran around NYC with a red backpack showing rentals to customers. Looking back on those memories makes me so proud of how far we've come as a company. Just goes to show that no dream is ever too big. No dream is ever too big. No vision, guys, is ever too big. It's never too big. And so this is the post from 2013 that he said, he says, this is when he was in the business. Remember, we talked about a technician, right? He didn't just start a company and was not doing these things himself. He said, so excited to be helping people find a great place to live in NYC. Had a fun afternoon showing customers apartment rentals on Sunday. Check out www.urbancompass.com and maybe I'll be showing you around. Yes, Gail, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Guys. Come on, can you see yourself in his shoes? Right now, today, you guys are so excited to, I hope you are, <laughs> it depends on, you know, the market is crazy right now, but don't lose your excitement. Don't lose your motivation. Right now, today, you are so excited to be helping people find a great place to live in South Florida. You're having a fun afternoon showing apartments for rentals, those for per, homes for purchase, Investors for investment gave the quick little call to action. Here's my website. Click the link in my bio, <laughs> right? That's what we do now. Click the link in my bio and I'll be showing you around. I'll get you in your new home. Put yourself in his shoes. Cast the vision. This was just eight years ago. Just eight years ago, Robert Refkin was walking around with the red back backpack in NYC showing rentals. He went from rentals to now, as we know, Compass, the brand is what? Luxury, luxury sales. And eight years later, they're in the New York Stock Exchange. Cast the vision. That's your homework. 
I didn't even plan that. I need you guys to write the vision. What, what, whatever it is. Now, some of you, you don't have the, the, the vision to be on the New York Stock Exchange. That's fine. You, you sh because guess what? There's a lot of responsibility that comes along with that. But what is your vision? What is your vision? We talk about vision boards. What is a vision for your business? If your vision is you and three team members, you, one team member, you and a full-time admin, you working three days a week, you working four days a week, you servicing Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina, South Carolina, write it, write the vision, make it plain. Wow, developer of new construction projects. Macwa, change your... um. I need you, they, everybody needs to see that. Macro, I need you to change your um, change your two to everyone in the meeting so that everyone can see that. That is so possible. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you guys saw, uh, our office will be closing on the auction of 40 lots in Boynton Beach for, for um, residential development. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. Check out my... Um, my social media page, my Instagram, and uh, you'll get information on that or shoot me a message. So, developer of new construction. So my point is here, I'm glad that you said that macro because um, developer of new construction could be starting out at as a single lot, right? She gonna, she's gonna start at one lot then do two, then do four, then do six, then do eight, then 10, 12, 20, et cetera. Going back to the quote, you don't have to be great to start. You don't have to start off that a 40 unit development to start. You don't have to have plans for a 40 unit development to start, but you need to start in order to get to the 40 unit development. Robert Refkin did not wait until he was a it's New York Stock Exchange or at the level to be a New York Stock Exchange real estate brokerage. He started with a red backpack doing rentals. He needed to start to be great. All right, that was number one, casting the vision. All right, now that we have the vision, what is the plan? What is the plan? What is the direction? How are we going to get there? So your business plan details your financial projections, your niche and target market, your marketing plan, your staffing, and the features of your products or services. What makes you unique? Jackie, Richard, Iva, why work with you? So your business plan is your strategy. It's your strategy. It's your strategy. It's your strategy. Like how are how am I going to do this? But guys, I want to remind you that again, your business plan is for the scale of your business. There are Fortune 500 companies do this same thing. They have a business plan. This is this is fundamental, right? Right. Whether you drive a a, a, a Kia or a Tesla, it's a car. Whether it's for your real estate team or your New York Stock Exchange real estate company, it's a business plan. So it is your business plan that provides the strategies you need to move from where you are today to where you want to be. If you don't have a plan to follow, your chances of achieving success are greatly diminished. Plans have a way of becoming reality, right? Craft your plan carefully and use it to guide your progress going forward. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to work backwards. So the first assignment was, what is the vision for the company? What is the vision for the company? And from that vision, we're going to work backwards. Today, we're going to do a quick introduction to financial projections, because at the end of the day, it's all about the dollars, right? Money answers all things. <laughs> Just, that's, what we, that's what we're doing, right? So. Let's do a quick introduction to financial projections. How much money do you want to make? Most people, six figures, right? You can definitely make a million all day long. Don't let me limit you there, but 
Let's just use six figures. Let's start. Let's say your financial, your revenue goal is $125,000 a year. That's fairly conservative, right? I would say so. Here's what we're doing for those six steps. One, you're going to set your, <laughs> you got the money bag, set your revenue goal. That's the first step. This is the intro to financial projection. What's the revenue goal? What's the number? What is it? What is the number? And now it shouldn't be arbitrary. How much does it cost for you to live? Like, well, how much do you, at the end of the day, how much do you need to net? You guys know that number, right? For sure, net versus gross. How much do you need to net to be satisfied? That's part that will, that will match and um, meet the vision. Now from there, you need to confirm what your expenses are. What does it cost you to operate your business? And so on the screen, we just have some examples. Again, we're gonna go into this even further next week, but this is some examples of some of the expenses. Salary and payroll, your salary, yes, your salary. Marketing and lead gen. If you do, you have an office, what does that cost? Your phone, office, guys, you run a business. These are business expenses, right? Your school, your car insurance, your professional license, your membership dues. Savings account, that's called capital. And any, any miscellaneous costs for the company. We're gonna lay that out. Once you add that amount to your revenue goal, what you need to net, now we know that your gross commission income needed is $150,000. We use as an example, $25,000. Let's say your expenses for the, for the year are $25,000. Just your expenses. Obviously, that does not include your, your, your salary. So now it's 150. Then let's determine your average commission per transaction. Everyone's numbers are different. If you're if you work more on the higher end, you know, 600, 800,000, a million, your commission range is going to be different than someone that's working in the 300, 350000 dollars range. Now let's say, for example, your Average commission is $8,250 because you're selling $275,000 properties. I mean, I know there's not many of those at all <laughs> in South Florida, but we're using that as a hypothetical for easy math. 275 is sold before you can put it on the MLS, right? But let's use that as an example. Let's say it's 3%, put you at 8,000. $8,250 uh, per transaction commission, 3%. Now from there, do the math to determine the number of transactions required to meet your revenue goal. That's just 19. Just 19 transaction guys in 12 months at a $275,000 sales price will hit your revenue goal of $150,000, just 19, 19. Then how many number of transactions must you do per month to hit your revenue goal? That's only 1.6. We can round it up to two. Two transactions per month, guys, to hit six figures. Revenue goal, Six figures, 125. Expenses, 25,000. Get us to 150. Average sales price, 275. Remember, that's at an average sales price of 275. And we know that our sales prices are much higher than that. We're looking more at like three, 350. If you're in Miami, for sure. Just two transactions per month will get you to that revenue goal. Can you do two transactions per month? Let me see it in the chat. Can you do tra two transactions per month? Who can do tr two transactions per month? Don't worry about, we're gonna get into all the, you know, the marketing and, and, and how do you get them to the closing table? But can you see yourself doing two transactions per month? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, she said yes and more. That's what I, exactly, exactly. Two guys, two transactions per month. 
Yes, you can. Two transactions per month will get you at that six figure income. Just two. Now see, this is how this is how clarity, business planning brings clarity. Business planning brings clarity, guys. It gives you the directions for how you're trying to get to your destination. This is no one ever sits down and makes you do this. Sit down and write this stuff down. What is the, how are we getting there? So I'm glad you said yes. Over the next few weeks, we're teed up now to dig into these, these big rocks, these components of your business plan. We're teed up now. You said yes. You told me that you can do two transactions per month. You said yes. Now we're going to really get into the work. I need you to get into the work. And so here's this quote that I love. It says, and the so-called secrets of success will not work unless you do. So we're going to break it down. We're going to make it clear, but will you work? Will you work? And if you agree to work, you're going to find yourself in a different place. Certainly 12 months from now. For sure in six. And then here's why you got to work. It's one of my other favorite quotes. It says, you can't cheat the grind. It knows how much you have invested. It won't give you anything you haven't worked for. No one is going to give you two deals a month. For my brokers on the line, I don't care how much they, how many leads they tell you they're going to give you. <laughs> They'll give you the lead, but you got to, you have to, um, what do they say? You got to skin it and fry it or whatever. You can't always give a man a fish. You have to teach him to fish. The, the, the grind, this thing is not going to give you anything that you haven't worked for. So we're going to figure out how to work. So here's the groundwork, guys. Next week, we're talking about a corporation. I get a lot of calls about, recall, why, you know, what is this PA, LLC? How do I do it? When should I do it? Why should I do it? Where do I do it? Let's have that conversation because guess what, guys? This saves you money. Remember everyone talks about tax write-offs? This saves you money. You put everything under the business, you're saving money. You've heard people talk about business credit. Well, if you're not incorporated, there's no credit to give your business. So we're going to talk about incorporation. This is business planning. Then we're going to dig deeper into these financial projections. Those $20,000, $25,000 we talked about, we're going to do the math to, for you to figure out what are your numbers. You have to know your numbers. Everyone's expenses are different, right? Your cell phone bill may be higher than mine. I don't know. You don't need office space. You, I, everyone's numbers are different. So let's get clear on how much it costs us to run our business. If I ask you right now how much it costs you to run your business, can you give me your number? If I ask you right now, how much it costs you to run your business, can you give me your number? If I ask you right now, how much it costs you to, um, for your marketing, effective marketing, not something you saw and you signed up and is charging you every month now because you signed up for the contract. Can you tell me your number? Can you tell me your average price? <laughs> I just said, nope. <laughs> can you tell me your average price point? Can, we, can you tell me your average number of transactions per month? If you've been in the business for 12 months or two years, can you tell me that? All right, Mackle, let's go. Good, she said yes. You gotta know your numbers. You gotta know your numbers. Can you tell me how many leads you have in your pipeline right now? Those are numbers. Can you tell me how much, how many leads your marketing is bringing back to you? That's marketing. Can you tell me what your marketing strategy is? Who are you talking to? Who's your, who's your niche market? How are you communicating with them? How are you keeping it warm? What's your brand? Robert Refkin had the red, back, the red backpack. How do people know you? That's marketing. We're going to get into that. 
service and systems. When the person says, when the person raises their hand and say, hey, hey, Mac, well, that's me. I, I, I'm ready to buy. What's the process? What's the system to get the prospect from hand raised, I'm ready to buy, I'm ready to sell to the closing table? Is that documented? Can you hand that off to a, to a TC or an admin and say, hey, go take care of them, make sure that they're, they're, they're signed up. Here's the listing agreement, put them on the market while I go get the next listing. Is that documented yet? We need to have that conversation. What are the tools that we're using to be successful in your business? Is the CRM working? Do we need to look at something different? Do we need to add to, do we need to add to our business? Do we need to add a tool? We talked about last, we talked about Calendly. We talked about Linktree. I mean, something simple. I hope everyone has implemented those things. Mac will say, yes, we do. There you go. And then finally, team building. You cannot do it all by yourself. So who's the next team member? It can be a transaction coordinator. That's part of your team. An independent contractor can be part of your team. And then from there, is it a full-time admin? Is it a part-time admin? Is it a buyer's agent? This is called scale. Going back to the beginning of our conversation, Robert Ref Refkin could not sell. He, he's not comp is all by himself, right? So what is the plan to build a team of people around you? Because you cannot do it all by yourself. Even if you're okay being a solo agent, you do want to go on vacation, right? Maybe you need to partner up with them with the realtor when you take vacation that they'll take your calls. So let's think beyond what we can do because we are only one person. So those are our weeks going ahead. We're going to build on this. I've never given you guys homework. I didn't even plan on this. Your homework. I need the vision. <clears throat> we need the vision. When we come together next week, we need the vision. As a matter of fact, no. Email me your vision. Email me your vision. Ray Cole at titleexperts.com. Ray Cole at titleexperts.com. Email me your vision. Maybe like, I don't know. I just want to make six figures. I don't, I just, I don't know what I want to do. I just wanted to stop. <laughs> I want to not be running around so much. That's fine. We can, we can facilitate that. We can put some, make, put some clarity around that vision. But I'm never giving you guys homework. That is the vision. That's the homework. What's your vision? Write it down for yourself. Send it to me. I love to see it so we can get, put some more on it. So any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Quiet, I know it's a lot. We probably was not expecting that one-two punch, but telling you guys, listen, Mackle, exactly. Listen, I talk from a place of experience, guys. I told you, I landed on my feet. by chance honestly I've always made six figures but I realized when it was time to scale I didn't have a plan I I'm like oh mm. <laughs> they said Rico how'd you do that uh, I just oh but now ask me <laughs> tell you all of this right and so this is just as important to you guys as it is to any other business owner again you are more than a real estate agent. You are a real estate agent CEO running your very own businesses. And someone, I'm looking forward to it, someone who I pass by, I'm looking forward to seeing that person, seeing that next compass, seeing that next Zillow, seeing that next, I mean, listen guys, like this is, that's all it is. Someone just took a concept and put a business plan and systems and tools around it and scaled it up. They ran it up. I'm looking forward to seeing the next person. I said, you know what? They were in my class. 
That's right, consistency. So look, in closing, our closing thought, if you are not keeping score, you are only practicing. If you are not keeping score, you are only practicing. We need some numbers on the boards, guys. We need numbers on the board. We need, I need you keeping score. I need you saying, like we talked about earlier, how many transactions am I getting per month on average? What's my average list price? What's my average closed sales rate? What is my conversion rate? What's my average list? I need you guys keeping your numbers. If not, you're just practicing. You're just day to day, whatever happens, happens. If you are not keeping score, you're only practicing. We're going to start keeping score, guys. And we're going to put some numbers on the board. Next week, incorporation and business structure. That's where we're going to start. I mean, when they come, they we need to come to a actual, you know, corporation, right? You're welcome, Stephanie. <laughs> Good to see you. Incorporation and business structure next week, next week, next week, next week. Everybody take a deep breath and exhale. I usually do that when I do the in-person classes. Inhale, exhale. That was a lot. But I know now you're ready. Oh, I'm glad. She said, I can't wait for next week. <laughs> I can't wait either. Let's go, guys. We're going to start keeping score. We're going to start keeping score. If you're not put, if you're not keeping score, you're just practicing. Just hanging out. We need some numbers on the board. Don't forget, send me your vision, raycold at titleexperts.com, and I will see you guys next week.